Ooh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, today has been a roller coaster, man. A roller coaster. I know everybody talked about it, and everybody going to mention it in their reviews, or if they already not made a video about it, or whatnot. They've been crazy, y'all. They've been absolutely insane. First off, I'm having a crazy day already with personal issues and my personal life, which I'm not going to get into. Then, around 3 p.m., TMZ. I get TMZ, which I never believe on the spot most times. I see that Kobe Bryant passed away. And I'm like, this, this ain't true. And I'm, I'm starting to go crazy, like, after 25 minutes of trying to figure this shit out, man. I'm sitting there. I actually tweeted out, can someone please tell me if this Kobe Bryant news is true or not? Because usually when we get something like this, it always be a lie or somebody just trolling or something like that, man. But then as... The minutes went by. I'm starting to see celebrities talk about it. More people is tweeting along with this. And then I'm starting to see news reports. More news reports start coming out. Talking about the whole entire thing. And at that point I'm like. Oh my goodness. C Kobe Bryant is actually gone. Kobe Bryant. The Kobe Bryant. One of the greatest basketball players of all time. Is gone. I'm saying it like I, I I can't believe it. I'm saying like I I can't believe it, y'all. I'm like 41 years old, Kobe. Like the Kobe Bryant. I'm like I just said, damn man. Like it, it was absolutely crazy. Like you like. My first reaction says like says it all, yo. Like I was literally just stunned about the like the whole thing. And what made matters worse is there were more lost along the way, including one of his daughters, man. Like when I seen that, it's like damn, man. It's like that makes that makes it more hurtful. Cause you hate to see the young go, man. Well, they didn't even get their feet wet yet. Like, you hate to see stuff like that, man. And one of the things I talk about with, with my homie, my brother, Ruben. I know you watching me, brother. I know you watching me. What's up, bro? I talked about this with him personally. I said, I, I hate when it always takes something like this to make us all come together and say, I love you. Like, anybody. Like, when, when we see death to somebody that's young... Everybody just all of a sudden get a wake up check and then they gotta say I love you. Why can't you real like why why some cannot realize this every day and realize that tomorrow can be your last day and why can't you just have the mindset to do right every day and say I love you and then go on about your business and try to make your life better for you instead of just standing by complaining and bitching and then just waiting for something to happen to make you just wake up and be like oh snap I gotta get my shit together before my life is gone tomorrow because we don't know when our lives gonna end y'all we don't that's that that's the one thing that we all have in common in this earth is death it's sad to say that but it is the God honest truth we all have one thing in common if it's that one thing is death that's one thing we all share and it always takes something like this to make us wake up and be like, like, I, I got to be my life better, like, like, or my life in tomorrow. I got to tell people I love people more or I got to spend time with this person more before it's too late and I'm going to regret it. Like, why, why, why can't we realize that now? Or, or if not, if, if this is the case, like, if you realizing that now, good. Stick with that. Don't lose that sight. Don't lose that sight, man. 
realize that you should always spend time with your family. You should always tell somebody that you love them, even if it just just out of nowhere, even for no reason. Cause I know for a fact I always do it, and, and and my boys can vouch for me for that. My fam can vouch for me for that. Always do this thing where I always give each of my family members a hug. And I know that might sound cringe, but I don't give a damn. That's what I love to do. One thing I do, y'all, that I, I might not told y'all before, I love to give out hugs. I love to give out hugs because it, it's it's the moment when in which that might be the last hug, and. You never know when it, your time is up. You never know. That's one of the things I do, y'all. Just want to let y'all know that. If y'all haven't known already. Some might have known. I told a few. I don't tell everybody this. But I think this is the, perf the proper opportunity to say it now. But I wish Kobe Bryant and family just, just going through this tragedy, man. I just... Just praying for the whole entire family, man. And everybody from Lake of Nation, Basketball Association, the fans, everybody. Everybody that's going through it. Every single one of you, man. Praying for every single one of y'all. Because now that you know, now that you know, like, don't take your life for granted. Just don't take your life for granted because you don't know when your time is going to be up. I'm pretty sure y'all heard this time and time again, but I just want to say it today. I think this is the perfect time to say it because we all got hit hard today. Let's just say it right now. We all got hit with this news and we all felt it worldwide. The whole world felt this one. The whole world felt this one. It's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. And Dudley mentioned it tonight as well. They mentioned it tonight as well. Lost a great one. Lost a legend. An icon. Kobe Bryant. 41. That's, that's the first thing come to mind. Then I think about his daughter was there with him. It's crazy, y'all. I'm sorry I had to come off with that. But I feel like I had to. I feel like this was the perfect time to talk about it. Perfect talk about... What I do, as far as how I express myself, and we just gotta keep moving, y'all. Like Kobe death does hurt, but it it won't be the last. It won't be the last. But I am I am praying for him and his family. And I'm praying for y'all too, cause y'all felt it just like me. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. I'm Team One Sixty One. Don't know who I am. Hit that like button. Subscribe to your boy, truly appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up, turn that bell for all notifications. And I know for a fact y'all got some things to say. I know for a fact y'all got some things to say, so y'all better damn well leave a comment. I'm waiting for some of y'all to talk about what happened in the Royal Rumble matches, both of them. And I'm also waiting for what y'all gotta say about both women's matches. That's what I'm looking for the most. What else? That's it. That's it mostly. Let's get down to business, y'all. Let's get down to business. I know what y'all here for. Y'all here for the review. Y'all ain't here. Well, y'all also here for the, the the talk as well about Kobe. Y'all want to hear my, my thoughts on Kobe. That as well. Okay? Let's talk about it, man. Let's talk about everything. Um, I did not see. I heard it was a good match, but I did not watch uh, some of the pre-show. You know, because I can't remember why I was doing that at the time, but I was not watching uh, some of the pre-show. But I did catch the Andrade and Humberto match. I did not see Sheamus versus Chad Gable. I heard that was a good match, and I also heard that Sheamus won. That's all I heard. And I also heard Chad Gable, the, in defeat, he looked it good. I'm just saying what I heard. That's all I heard. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Screw it. Let's continue on. This match I did see right here, man. This is the match that I did see. Andrade versus Humberto Creo. Thank God Humberto didn't win. The dude, get, get, once again, no reaction. No reaction. They have to hit the drawing board with this guy, man. As good as Humberto is, I'm not trying to discredit him, man, on this day. But I feel like I have to on this day. He one of those guys which, he's a good wrestler, but we don't actually know him, know him. We, we're not invested in Humberto Creo. We're not. We're not invested in him. We don't know nothing about him. Who is this guy? We didn't get a veil package or nothing. 
Who is he? Most of us don't know who he is. I know who he is, but most of us don't know who he is. We don't care about Humberto enough, man. We don't. We don't. This was the 100% God truth to have Andrade win this match. And speaking of Andrade, we love Andrade. They're not doing him very. They're not doing him a good service as far as putting his matches on the pre-show. When fans see that, that you're pretty much telling us that yes, he's the United States champion, but you don't give a shit about Andrade. That's what that tells me. They can't have this guy keep being on the pre-show. Can you imagine him being on the pre-show at Mania? I think the world gonna go on fire. Well, the Andrade fans gonna go gonna be heated up, if you know what I mean, man. But damn, like they they have to stop having Andrade matches on the pre-show. They have to end that now. That's not doing Andrade any service, man, at all. This match was very good for what it was. If you seen one Andrade versus Humberto match, you seen all of them. They did kind of the same stuff here, but some little different, few differences in there. But for the most part, it was about the same thing we seen already, okay? But Umberto now, no question, has to be at the back of the line. This is it for Umberto, folks. He needs to go in the back of the line, get back to the drawing board, and they need to start focusing on how we can care about this dude. Because that's what they got planned for him next. They have to start planning how we going to invest our time in this guy. But right now, nobody gives a damn about Umberto Creo. And that's a fact. That's a fact, y'all. Clear as day. And I know most of you, most of you, is going to agree with me on that statement. No question about it, man. Andrade retains the United States Championship, as he should. As he should. Now, as far as what he does at WrestleMania, I say let's do a ladder match, a multi-ladder match with five or six different guys. That's what I'll do. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, Andrade doesn't really have like that one person to feud with on Raw, I feel like, right now that we can invest in right now. So just do a multi-man match. Maybe, have a, maybe Andrade win a multi-ladder match at WrestleMania. We're probably doing some justice. Maybe we'll be like, okay. We got to start taking this guy more seriously than we already should. Okay? That's what I feel like right now. That's what they should do. Either that or have him face uh, Alistair Black. W one or the other at this point. That's what I feel right now. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. What they should do on Andrade? I'm thinking either Alistair Black or six, uh, six way ladder match at Mania. That's what I'm feeling, man. That's what I'm feeling right now. At this very moment. I could change my mind. We haven't seen Raw yet. Let's find out. But let's get it, y'all. Now the actual show begins. The actual show begins. So we seen the kickoff. They had these little tease about certain guys, aka Mr. Cena himself. We're gonna get to that in a second. We're gonna get to that in a second. Let's talk about the Rumble match itself. We are already 13 minutes in this video. Let's go. Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin. This is the best move they could have made. Why? Because nobody was going to take that time watching this match. For what we seen, let me tell you right now. If you seen SmackDown, if you seen TLC, if you seen a, a Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin match, you didn't miss nothing right here. This was kind of the same stuff we've been seeing. Just a little few adjustments. Just like I said with Andrade and Umberto match. You seen one, you seen it all. Like it was not much, not much different here. It wasn't much different here. Okay? I'm not going to sit and say they didn't have a bad match. It was decent. For what we seen, it was decent. But, really, we still don't know why they're feuding. And, hopefully, this is the end. Hopefully, this is the end of their feud. I don't want to see another Roman Reigns or Baron Corbin match. Ever. At least for a while. At least for a while. But, more than likely, they're going to book it again on SmackDown this week. Watch. Watch, I, I just got that feeling. Like this, this is Delhi, this is Delhi mentality. They're gonna keep this thing going until they feel as though like it's over. But we are already done with. We over and done with. We've been over and done with since TLC. We thought okay, it, it's gonna end there. But nope, they kept that thing right on going. Every time you watch SmackDown, we seen the same guys. We seen Roman, Corbin, and Ziggler, and and uh Robert Roode. Now they added Usos into the mix, you know? And now they've been jailing to this thing. And speaking of those uh, guys that I mentioned, the Usos, Dolph Ziggler, and Robert Roode, 
they got involved right here. They got involved here. You know, with Dolph and Robert coming to help Corbin. Pretty much they're lackeys. They're, they're just lackeys at this point. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode are just nothing but lackeys, man. They're nothing but lackeys. I'm not going to say the same about the Uso because they just returned. Hopefully, they're no longer trying to protect Roman Reigns. Like, hopefully they end all that. And they can focus on what they should be focusing on. And that's the Tag Team Championships. Even though I don't want them to face the New Day. But that's the need be that focus. The Tag Team Championships. Hopefully, it's not against the New Day. But more likely, that's what the match they're going to book. Why? Because this is the WWE. Okay? This is the WWE. They're most likely going to book that match. Because they feel as though, like, that's the money match. And to me, it isn't. To me, it isn't. Honestly, I want to see Heavy Machinery get what they're, they're, they're just did. I want to see them finally catch the big one. Maybe they'll add them to the mix. Maybe they'll do a triple threat. Something similar to Edge and Christian, Dudley Boys, you know, Holly Boys, something like that. I'm not going to say they're going to match, match that level, but I'm saying they might do something like that at Mania. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind that. I want my triple threat ladder match for the tag team championships. I'll go with that. You know, I I think that would be awesome. You ask me. I don't know, man. Let me try thinking about that. But anyway, let's continue on, man. For for the most part, this match was uh very boring. Uh, most for most parts were very boring. Uh, like I said, I already said Rude Ziggler also showed up, which kind of destroyed the vibe of the match because it was kind of. Uh, gathering momentum, but then as soon as they showed up, that momentum went away, and Roman hit a awful spear to Corbin. I don't know if Roman hit the spear wrong or Corbin just sold it wrong. I couldn't really tell at that point, but regardless, Roman hit the spear on Corbin. One, two, three. Roman Reigns wins the false count anyway, and I'm hoping this is the end because, and it should be because we all said it together. This feud gonna end with Roman standing tall, and that's exactly what happened. Baron Corbin was down, Roman Reigns stood tall with the fans, and I figured that's the way it's gonna end. Right there. Done. Next up, man, the 30 Women's Royal Rumble match. Coming out at number one, we get Alexa Bliss and Bianca Belair entering at number two. Let's talk about Bianca Belair. It's hard for me to review a Rumble, but I'm gonna try to do the best way I can, so work with me. Let's talk about Bianca Belair. She was fantastic in this rumble, for one. She was honestly like not not just her. I, I'm on. You know what? Honestly, Bliss was impressive too. Believe it or not, Bliss was honestly impressive in this rumble. That might actually shock some people, but I was impressed with her. You know what I'm saying? But Bianca was the one who impressed me the most. Like right here at this early stage of the rumble, probably with the. She probably did the best thing about anybody in the row, in my opinion. Possibly. She was definitely impressive. Number three surprised me. Mighty Molly, man. I, 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 rem- <laughs> I remember her hurricane, man. I, I, I remember that, man. That way back, man. That, that was crazy. I, I did not expect that. I really didn't expect that. But that was a good moment right there. We got Mighty Molly showing up. Number four, Nikki Cross, like the bliss showing all her teeth at this moment. Nikki Cross, man, I, I wish she would just end this whole I'm obsessed with Alexa Bliss thing. I want the old Nikki Cross back. I want NXT Nikki back, man, for real. I, I, you kind of see it in her that she can channel that, but it's it just not there, man. It really isn't. I want that Nikki Cross back. I miss that Nikki Cross. I want it back. I pitched the idea of having Nikki be the one to turn on Alexa because everybody expecting Alexa to turn on Nikki. I say go the opposite route. Have Nikki turn on Alexa, but more than likely that's not going to happen because Nikki is obsessed with her. Which I pitched the other idea. How Alexa Bliss started like talking to another woman on the roster. Nikki, Nikki Cross get jealous. Boom. Something, please. Anything to get Nick, old Nikki Cross back. That's what I want. <laughs> Number five was Lana. My God, man. I don't know why she was in this rumble. And you know what's funny? Sasha Banks was not in this rumble. We got freaking Lana in this rumble, but no Sasha Banks. Now, there was rumors about Sasha being injured. More likely that's true. I don't know if that's true or not. But I'm pretty sure somebody's going to tell me in the comments that you have with Sasha Banks. Because I, I, I was kind of seeing something. But I didn't really go 
I didn't really go into it, like, like see what's going on with Sasha Banks. I just want to just wait for one of y'all to tell me or one of y'all DM me on Twitter. That's what I usually do. So I'm pretty sure y'all going to let me know. But you got Lana but no Sasha Banks. Like, come on now. And then she cut a promo. Like, they definitely hate us, man. They, they, it was a few moments in the, in these rumbles that, that made me honestly think they hate us. Honestly. And this was one of the moments right here. This promo with Lana, one of the moments where I say, no, they hate us. They hate us. Okay? And that wasn't the last time even I said that. Number six with Mercedes Martinez. Definitely a shock. I didn't expect that, but I'm glad to see her in the Rumble match. She also took out, uh, she got taken out. Sorry, sorry. Uh, she got taken out by uh, Fire and Desire. Um, number seven, we seen Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan into this Rumble. And right away, first one eliminated, Lana by Liv Morgan. And we already knew at that point, Lana was going to serve herself. I said it. She's going to serve herself right back into the Rumble and eliminate Liv Morgan. That's exactly what happened. So we get Lana and Liv Morgan out of the Rumble. How many Liv Morgan fans were pissed at that point? Let me know. Honestly. You're a Liv Morgan fan. How many of y'all are pissed? How many of y'all are pissed? Let's continue. Mandy Rose was number eight. Candice LeRae was number nine. Sonya Deville was number 10, and it was a moment in this rumble, which I don't know where the hell he came from, but it was a point where Rose was about to get eliminated, then all of a sudden we see Otis just laying there on the floor, just not allowing Mandy Rose feet to hit the floor, and the crowd went crazy, and for the most part, this crowd was dead, but at this point, they were going freaking nuts, just seeing Otis right there out of nowhere. Where the hell did he come from? Where did all this come from? I'm, I'm just, I'm just praying that to, to God that somebody in that arena let me know where all this came from. More, t nine, nine out of times out of ten, it's not gonna happen. I hope it does, but more like, most likely, it's not gonna happen. Where the hell did all this come from? So he saves uh, Mandy Rose not once but twice because she about to eliminate again, and then like on SmackDown, all this just catches her man, and all this was hilarious this moment man because he was just saying like. Oh yeah, mama! Like yeah, I got you. I was like, I got you. It the, the moment when Mandy turned on Otis, it's gonna shock. It's gonna hit everybody hard, man. Because you see that we are all invested in Otis to the point where it's really gonna explode. Everybody gonna be pissed when Mandy turns. It's gonna make Mandy Rose a better heel, and it's gonna make Otis a better baby face. All at the end, man. Like you, it's all coming to fruition. It's all coming to fruition. And they could possibly carry this to WrestleMania. Like, I can see this carrying to WrestleMania. They can have Manny Rose stick at the oldest and the TLC match that I just pitch. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine if Manny Rose just always on come down that ramp and supporting all the cheering on oldest? He climbing up the ladder and then all of a sudden Manny Rose just pushed the ladder and how the fans just go crazy that once again, hey, machinery got screwed at the continuously getting screwed at this point. Can you imagine it? Oh my goodness, y'all. Yo. That would be insane. Insane. Either that or they could just have the thing continue. But have her, have her actually help Otis win the titles. But then call some of the titles later on. Either way, I'm sold. I'm absolutely sold, man. I'm sold. Because I actually care about both Maddie and Otis. Unlike Lashley and Lana... I, I, I like Liv Morgan. I'm not going to start her in it. Rusev, I don't care about Rusev anymore, honestly. But Liv, I, I want to see more of Liv Morgan. I said it on my Raw review. I want to see more of Liv Morgan in the ring. I, I think I see something there. I might be the only one. But I, I just see I see something, y'all. I really do. I see something. Something is there for me. I don't know what it is, but something is there. Okay? Let's continue on. So... Number 11, we get Kyrie saying. I got to something to say about Kyrie saying later on. But she, Kyrie saying hilarious, y'all. I'm going to talk about her more later. Um, number 12, Mia Yim. Number 13 was Dana Brooke. Um, number 14 was Tamina. Um, I don't know why Tamina was in this room. But that's another thing. We got Tamina, but no Sasha. Like, uh... Who else? I'm sorry. I lost my, uh, Dakota Kai was also in this rumble. In, in, in this, in this way, Mr. Bo, that you you get Dakota Kai in the rumble at 15. But let me skip a few numbers. But then you get 
Tegan Knox at 28. Why in the hell would you have Tegan Knox show up at 28? She got no reaction. Only to have Dakota Kai show up at 15. You should have had Tegan Knox show up at either 17 or 18 and eliminate Dakota. Or have Dakota eliminate her to continue what's going on with them. Like, wh why would you do that? I, 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 don't, I don't get that. Like, why? Why? 16 with Ashley Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green was at number 16, and she, and she got eliminated so fast before you could blink. She was gone in like two seconds. She got her little shine, and then she was gone. I think that was very wrong. I, I, I see a lot of money in Chelsea Green, honestly. When the time is right, it will come. Right now is not that time. But sooner rather than later, hopefully, the other will have some sense. Her time will come. Her time will come. But for now, you serve very well at NXT. Um, 17 was Charlotte. Uh, Naomi was 18. That was uh, not a surprise for me. I did expect Naomi to be in this Rumble. Welcome back, Naomi. Um, Beth Phoenix was number 19. Tony Storm, number 20. I I got a reply. Um, I'm, 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 that's a good little debate going I got a reply saying some someone told me that Tony Storm is not as thick. Like really? That like, did, did you have you seen the the behind? I'm just I'm just saying. Like honestly, I mean that's your opinion, but I, I, I I'm just saying, I don't know what you're looking at, bro. I don't know what you're looking at. But anyway, other team. Uh, number twenty one was Kelly Kelly. Twenty two was Sarah Logan. Um, twenty three was Natalia. Um, oh, another thing. Speaking of Sarah Logan, Charlotte eliminated Sarah Logan. Once again, Charlotte is a, a thorn in Sarah Logan behind. Like, you really couldn't give Sarah Logan that moment to be Charlotte on Raw. Like, really, WWE? Really? Um, Zia Lee was 24. Uh, now, I, I, let me start right there. At, at this point of the Rumble is where it, it got bad at, honestly. The Women's World Rumble started very hot. It sold out very well. But in my honest opinion, at this point of the Rumble, once it hit around 23, 24, around this point, definitely the Rumble started to die off. And the crowd definitely showed that. They didn't give a single fuck what's going on. They was dead throughout this thing. Um, we get Selena Vega at number 25 here. Uh, we get Chelsea Blackheart at number 26. 27 was Carmella. 28, like I mentioned, Tika Knox. And number 29, bro. I, I, like, honestly, Santina. Yes, y'all. Santina Morella. Y'all remember Santino's sister? Half of his sister? Yes, y'all. I'm not kidding. Santina Morella was honestly 29, and there was no Sasha Banks. Let that sing it for a moment. I'm, I'm just going to say it for a moment. I know some of y'all don't hate Sasha Banks, but be honest. Honestly, like, who, who, who else was out there could have been this Rumble? Like, I. I I mentioned three names. I mentioned three names. Santina Morella. Who, who else I, I thought should have been should not have been in the Rumble? Who else? Lana. Uh, who else? Tamina. There you go. Tamina, Lana, and San, Santina. But but no Sasha. Who else won in the Rumble? Who, who else I'm forgetting about? I know it's more names. They, they could have added more NXT with this. Why Santina in this thing? Like, yes, to start down with... With Santina and, and Beth Phoenix made sense because of their history, but honestly, did you see what happened? They had Santina get in the ring, bring out the Cobra, tease the Cobra strike on Beth Phoenix and Natalia. Then all of a sudden, he Cobras himself and eliminates himself. Like so stupid, like stupid shit like that. The, the, the short, like at that point, the, the whole room experience for me was gone. At this point. Like, it was always on the dial, but then once Santina came out, that's it. That was it. Over. It was over. And, but it, it, it didn't get worse there, folks. Oh, it did not get worse there. Because check this out. Number 30 was the one who we all we all said was going to be at this point at this Rumble, man. We all said it. Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler was at, at, in the Rumble, and that's when things started to get uh, messy. She started to clean house. The, the It was packed at this point. Shayna Bay was cleaning the house, her, her and Charlotte, and then it got down to 
who who was the final four? I believe it was Charlotte. It was Charlotte, uh, Natalia, Beth Phoenix, and Shayna Baszler. That was the final four, right there, y'all. Those are the final four. And at this point, we're like, Shayna definitely win at this point because that's what I'm saying. At this point, this point at this point, I'm saying Shayna is definitely winning because Beth Phoenix do doesn't need this. She's a Hall of Famer. Um, Natalia, Natalia versus Lynch or Bailey would not be the ideal match. No, it shouldn't be. Plus, Natalia got no momentum at all. Even though I love her, but she got no momentum, y'all. I'm sorry. And Charlotte already been there. She been to the top. Why she need a Rumble win? That's what I'm saying to myself. That's what I'm saying to myself at this point. So here I'm seeing Beth Phoenix all of a sudden turn to tell you like the, the, the typical best friend lemonade best friend cliche moment right here. Well, Natalia been shocked. And let me say one thing about Natalia. She looked absolutely fantastic in this rumble. Honestly. Then we get down to the final three. Charlotte, Beth Phoenix, and Shayna. Then I believe Shayna... No, I think it was Charlotte. I can't remember who will eliminate Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix was the next one eliminated. I think it was Shayna, though. Somebody let me know. I, I can't remember. I can't remember, y'all. Then it was the final two. We get Shayna Baszler... And Charlotte. And at the point, I'm like, oh my God, the idea that I pitch months ago is about to happen. We're about to honestly get Shayna versus Charlotte at Mania somehow, some way at this point. And, I, and that could still very well happen. I don't know. But here's what I do know Charlotte Flair eliminated Shayna Baszler. And I'm like, oh my God. And this is point number two. Remember why I said Dudley hates us? Look right here. They knew that we we were all like they knew all of us were picking Shayna Baszler at this point, and they have Charlotte Flair eliminated Shayna Baszler, shocking us all at this point. And at this point, we all just sitting there confused, like, "Oh my God, what the hell just happened? Why the hell is Charlotte winning a Royal Rumble? Why does Charlotte even need a Royal Rumble?" She doesn't need a Royal Rumble win, y'all. She doesn't. I understand she's the golden goose, the cash cow. I understand that. But Charlotte doesn't need it. She's already established. The Royal Rumble is for superstars who need it. Charlotte doesn't need it. This is another thing to add to her resume because she's Charlotte Flair. That's why I always mention this, man. This is why I would never be a fan of Charlotte. Even though I feel like she is gotten better in her own right. This is why I say I'll never be a fan of Charlotte because the moment when she came from NXT, I'm going to say it, I'm going to keep saying it. The moment she came from NXT, I knew this was going to happen. All this stuff happened to her, the winning the title, title at the title at the title, and all these accolades that she accomplishing, I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming, and I appreciate you guys knew it was coming too. And that's why I say on that day, when I first seen Charlotte Flair, I will never, never be a fan of Charlotte. Even though I feel like she's gotten better her own right, and she has gotten better, but I'll never be a fan of her because of shit like this. Why, somebody tell me why Charlotte Mia win. Why is Charlotte Mia Rumble win? So now what's going to happen? I've been hearing about they, we could possibly get the Rumble match that Vince wanted last year with Charlotte versus Ronda. With Ronda coming back and beating Becky Lynch. What's going to happen? At this point, we're thinking about Charlotte is going to face Becky Lynch, which we've seen that so many damn times. Nobody wants to see that. I know I, know I don't. I know I don't. Or we're going to get Charlotte versus Bailey, which is another match that we don't want to see because we've seen that so many times and that would be even worse than Shaw versus Becky. Why? Because Bailey got no momentum right now. Awful. Awful. So, this is why I pitched the idea of maybe, and I said this months ago, uh, possibly Charlotte versus Shayna. Maybe Shayna is about to appear on Raw. And more than likely, we'll probably get that match between Shayna Baszler and Becky Lynch. Remember what happened at Survivor Series? That I, I still think that ain't happened for nothing. That could be the next build-up. They could be building Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler. And then Shayna beating Becky. But then everybody going to be like, what's going to happen with Becky Lynch? How is she going to get to WrestleMania? 
I don't know what's gonna happen, y'all. I really don't. All I know is Charlotte Flair won the Royal Rumble and she's going to WrestleMania. Even though she's gonna go to WrestleMania anyway. Which makes it more dumb that she won. Because she was gonna get there anyway because she's Charlotte Flair. So I feel like this was a waste of a win. I think this should have went to someone who, who honestly needed it. Like a Sasha Banks. You know? Or Shayna. I mean, Sh Shayna doesn't need it, but still, though. Like, Shayna versus Becky Lynch, one-on-one. -on -one, that, that could have been the match that we wanted to see. I don't know, y'all. I, I feel like Charlotte winning. It, like, the Royal Rumble match so had its moments, but... The outcome really didn't do it for me, man. Like I said, it, it, saw, it started off hot, but then around, around 23, it, it started dying. And then once Santina came out, th that, that was it. And then Charlotte winning made it more worse. That's how I feel, yo. And that's the 31 Royal Rumble, man. So let's talk, let's, let's talk more, man. What, what else? What, what we got? Lacey Evans versus Bailey. Oh, my dear Jesus. Remember when I, I said it every time. Remember when I said that Lacey Evans wasn't ready? Y'all still believe she's ready now? Jesus Christ. I understand that some superstars botch. But it was the way she was botching in this match. And then the execution was sloppy. The botching was a freaking mess. Bailey looked at... It was at a point when Bailey was... Just looked at frustrated of wrestling Lacey Evans at, at a certain point. Honestly. I can't remember when, it, when I seen it. But it was at a point when she would look so frustrated of wrestling Lacey Evans. Like... I, I, I'm honestly thinking that she sitting there thinking like, I hope this is the last time I'm wrestling Lizzie Evans. Like, honestly. I still believe Lizzie Evans got potential. She has the gimmick. And I, I, I pitched this idea. Her and Dana Brooke needs to be a tag team. Have Dana Brooke dressed like Lizzie Evans. Tag team. Right there. Lizzie Evans and Dana Brooke. Tag team. That needs to be the focus now. That's, that, that's, that's my idea that I pitched. That needs to be the focus. And remember, I said, I was the main one said it first. They should have been a tag team months ago. Way before we seen them even became a team on SmackDown. Teaming up together. I said it. I said, we need to get Dana Brooke teaming with Lacey Evans. Dana Brooke dressing up like Lacey Evans. And we got a new tag team. Boom. Boom. That's my idea. But damn, I ain't going to get the credit for that because who am I? Who am I? They said we're not ready, folks. I, I still feel like she got potential, but she's not ready. She wasn't ready before this, and she wasn't ready. Definitely damn sure ain't ready after. She's not ready. Bailey. I hate to say this about Bailey. I love Bailey. I do. But I'm, I'm about to give her the Nakamura treatment. She needs to drop that title. She, she do. It's it, it just that the WWE has failed Bailey to a point where, like, I, I don't, I don't want to see a champion anymore. Like, and that's sad to say. That's sad to say because I like Bailey, but it's at a point where she is doing nothing with the championship. She's not enhancing the championship. The championship not enhancing Bailey. She's not doing anything with it, and it's not her fault. It is not her fault. WWE had neglected Bailey time and time again. Even as she turned heel, they still neglected Bailey. They still neglected Bailey. Yes, we're sitting here hoping that Sasha and Bailey this thing start cooking. But once it do, I'm hoping that Sasha take that title from Bailey, man. Like it, it has to get off of Bailey and not on Lacey Evans. Like at this point, who on SmackDown right now? Who on SmackDown? Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville. Uh, honestly, right now, I I would take Sonya Deville. I, I, I might get some hate for, <laughs> I might get some hate for this y'all but I'm not kidding I will only take Alexa Bliss a champion over Bailey right now I, I might get some heat for that I might get some heat for that but I don't give a damn y'all that's how bad Bailey got it like they, they don't give a damn about Bailey they really don't they really don't I might, I might regret saying that and that's I'm not but I'm, I know y'all might get me on that but it's okay. But that's how I feel, y'all. I, I, I really do feel that way. I really do feel that way. And I hate to say that. I really do. But they not doing nothing with that title. She not. Next up, man. Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend. Daniel Bryan versus The Fiend. Most part match boring, honestly. Uh, uh, has some good highlights in there. Daniel Bryan, despite The Fiend, just 
undesired not to give up, you might call it. Um, also, there was no red lighting. Thank Christ. It looked so good seeing the, the, no, the, right, the lights gone. Um, and the way this match went, it, it was just perfectly booked. Once again, the thing is undestructible. Like, who's going to beat this guy? The way he's being booked, you're going to have to hit like 15 finishes to beat this guy. Remember, Seth Rollins, I, I'm so called to this day. Seth hit 11 curve stomps. So, whoever beat the Fiend, hey, you better hit 15 or 20. I'm, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You're going to take more than a spear to get it done. I'm just saying. More than one. Or five. More than five. I'm just saying. But the Fiend wins, of course. He retained the gold. Uh, Daniel Bryan, um, he got this little moment when, like, he like he about to go away. Crowd just clapping for him after the hard fought battle. The last five minutes of the match was very interesting because we seen the Fiend just all of a sudden just went into like indestructible mode, and everything Daniel Bryan hit him with, he couldn't feel a damn thing. He was just sitting there just taking the hit shots, kicks and the straps, laughing it all off, and then hit the sister Abigail. And then he hit the Mamba Claw. Over. Over. So there you go, man. Fiend's still the champion. And more than likely, he's going to be still champion all the way to WrestleMania. It was also announced to be getting a Super Showdown. I would not be watching that. Not at all. I'll be waiting for the Mission Chamber. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's continue. Becky Lynch versus Oscar. Um, match was good. Match was very good, y'all. Honestly, but... In my honest opinion, the one thing I enjoyed the most from this match was not even the match itself. It was honestly Kyrie Sane act a reaction. Kyrie Sane reaction in this whole entire match is what I enjoyed the most, honestly. And I'm not trying to sit here and just and put down Becky Lynch or Oscar. Like I thought that that was a good match, even though last year was better though. I'm just saying, last year was better, but this match was still good though. The match was still very good from what we've seen, okay? And Becky Lynch, after numerous attempts of not being Oscar, she finally beat Oscar right here on this night. As we all expected, Oscar's own power shot her in the back, hit in the face. Um, Oscar at a point tried to hit Becky Lynch with a green miss, but the referee back was turned. Becky Lynch hurry up and kicks her. Oscar falls back. Green Miss going in the air. Falls into her face. Oscar on move. Shot her, like, shot her back at her. Cost her the match. Becky Lynch, finally, defeat Oscar. Becky Lynch, one last death, right? So, what next with Becky Lynch now? She said that was the last one. So, like I said, I'm assuming by her saying that, she about to get a new challenger. That's one that she never faced. Well, she faced her, but she haven't beaten her, though. And Shayna Baszler. That's why I feel like Shayna is, is about to be on Raw. More than likely. But we'll see. I could be wrong. Either Shayna or Ronda. One of them going to show up. And it was funny. Speaking of Ronda. Um, she did post on Instagram that y'all thought I was coming tonight. Maybe that's a tease. Maybe she's not coming on this night. Maybe she's also going to show up tomorrow night. Possibly. Just saying. Or maybe she show up at Super Showdown. Or maybe she show up at every Super Showdown. Maybe at the Missing Chamber. I mean, that's basically the contract signing that one year. Possible. Possible. But we'll see, though. We'll see, y'all. But Becky Lynch uh, retained the gold. She is still the Raw Women's Champion. And finally, finally, y'all, we get to the men's. Royal Rumble match. We all know Brock Lesnar number one. Before I even talk about this match, uh, let me just, just say a few names right now for you. Let me say a few names right now for y'all. Elias, Eric Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison, Kofi Kingston. Well, in fact, I won't even say Kofi Kingston. Take that back. Elias, Eric Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison, uh, Cesaro, Shawn Benjamin. Nakamura, um, not counting him, uh, not counting him, okay, those names right there I just named, those names I named, buried, all of them, every single one of them, I'm gonna name them again, Rowan, 
Rue, John Morrison, Cesaro, Sean Benjamin Nakamura. Buried. I don't care if anybody said. And yes, Nakamura. The Intercontinental Champion. Barry. Barry, man. I'm, I'm putting out APP out for Nakamura. Someone please get that damn title off Nakamura. Get the title off Nakamura right now. Immediately. I don't care if it's booked on SmackDown this week. It needs to go now. It should have been gone. It needs to go right now. Honestly, I'm not even playing right now. I've been saying this for months. They're not doing nothing with Nakamura in the kind of champion. And I know right now he's feuding with Strowman. I don't want to show him in the kind of championship. Uh, I don't want to see him win the title neither, okay? I don't want to see him win the championship neither. But Jesus Christ, get that damn title on Nakamura right now, y'all. I'm serious. Put on Strowman. Just, just put on Strowman so we can focus on who going to take it off of Strowman. That's where I'm at right now, honestly. That is where I'm at. Jesus Christ, man. Get that damn title. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. But let's talk about the match itself, man. Oh my God, yo! If I tell you that this match was so like, when I say Vince hates us, this is point number three. He had Brock out here eliminating all these guys. He eliminated Elias, Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison, Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, Big E, Cesaro, Shelton Benjamin, Nakamura, and it's the surprise return of Mr. MVP. Return on this night eliminates him. He eliminated. He even eliminated Keith Lee and Braun Strowman at the same time. At the same time. Damn. Damn man. How many names that? Fourteen names. Fourteen names. I think he tied the record with Roman Reigns. Wow. Wow man. And then let's talk about who. Who want to talk about? John Morrison. Damn John Morrison. God Jesus Christ man. First, you have him show up backstage randomly, not even in the rumble. Shows up backstage randomly. You put him with the Miz, who also not getting no momentum because of his baby face. Well, he I think he a heel now. I don't even know what Miz is, man. Miz is a baby face, I believe he still is. But right now, him and John Morrison, like. No one is even invested in John Morrison right now. Honestly, nobody gives a shit about John Morrison. They killed his run already. It hasn't even been like how long he been around. Like I think they killed his his momentum like two weeks on, on arrival. Two weeks on arrival, and he already feel like everybody else. Not don't feel special at all, at all. Um, Kofi Kingston. Um, Kofi King's still okay, Remy Stowe's still okay, they got work in, all three men, Big E, they all try to take out Brock, but they got all three of those guys, um, Cesaro, buried, Sean Benjamin buried, he been buried, um, Nakamura, Intercontinental Champion buried, get that damn title, Nakamura, I'm keep saying it, um, then, then we get the 15, y'all, after Ron Strowman and Keith Lee got eliminated, we get the 15, Ricochet, we see him having on Raw between Brock and, and uh, Ricochet. At that point, we all saying Ricochet is a loser. And even after this night, after despite what happened, I still feel like he's a loser. I don't care what he did. He's still he's still a loser. Cause what we seen was Drew McIntyre coming at number sixteen. At this point, the crowd got invested, fighting back into the matchup. Um, Drew McIntyre staring down Brock Lesnar. Out of nowhere, we see Brock just well, well Brock, Brock take off his gloves. Then we see I know uh Ricochet low blows Brock Lesnar. And then out of nowhere, Drew McIntyre, Claiborne kick, eliminates Brock Lesnar at this point. And we were all invested. This was one of the, the bright lights of this Royal Rumble. After all that bullshit that we had to sit there, sit through, where Brock eliminated guys one by one, you finally get to Drew McIntyre and he saves us all. That was a good spotlight right there. That was a good way to do that because what they did was, despite the crap that we had to sit through, what they did was they were making us feel like, damn, Drew McIntyre saved us from Brock Lesnar at this point. And that, that was good. That was good. So I had to give the WWE credit for that. They, they did good right here with Drew McIntyre. They did good right here. They did good right here. And we get to stare down from Brock and Drew, which was a good moment itself. Then 17, we get The Miz. Uh, then AJ Styles, number 18. Number 19 with Dolph Ziggler. 
I, I, I don't understand why Carl Anderson. Cause somebody tell me why Carl Anderson Luke Gallows in his rumble. I mean, seriously. They could get that some spot somebody else. Who was in this room that should have been in this room? Like, who, 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 who was in this room? I feel like that was a waste, honestly. Um, no 20 Carl Anderson, but 21. Oh my God, y'all. It's like I was shocked, but then again, I wasn't. But I was still surprised, and I still just marked out. I was very surprised. Very surprised, man. Edge. Yo, Edge no fucking great, y'all. He look good. He he can't he he keep with the crowd up. The crowd was dead throughout most of this whole entire thing. Edge came out twenty one. Crowd went nuts. And yes, he even got the power off. Thank God they brought power back because we love seeing that shit from Edge. Do that pole power spot or everything, everything. Now what we see from Edge right here was. First of all, he 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 still look like he can move again. That's that's that's, that's great, all great. But what we seen was kind of a little tease. We seen Edge and AJ Styles. It, it's possible. Just saying. I mean, I wouldn't mind if it's one on one. I would love to see it one on one at Mania. I wouldn't mind that shit at all. Let's get it. But more than likely, it's going to be the OC and possibly Edge teaming up with Randy Orton. I can see that possibly happening with a partner of that choosing. I don't know who it could be, but we shall see. But anyway, despite all that, um, that was a good little moment there. Um, and, oh, yeah, and by the way, as they eliminate AJ Styles, so just put, put that in mind as well. Um, who else? Number tw 22 was uh, King Corbin. 23 was Matt Riddle. Matt, I was surprised. I, I, I didn't expect Matt Riddle being this thing, but he was. So they kind of missed the boat with Matt Riddle because they could have had Brock and Matt Riddle. Just saying, but I did hear they had like a little confrontation backstage. I don't know if that's true, but I did hear about that. Anyway, um, 24 Luke Gallows, 25 was Randy Orton, 26 was Roman Reigns, 27 we got Kevin Owens. At, at this point, the Roman, it was like we all knew it was coming at this point because they were all they all announced themselves in the Royal Rumble. I already knew that Alistair Black was in it, Samoa Joe, and Seth Rollins. That's who all came next, man. 28 was Alex Black. 29 was Samoa Joe. And 30, uh, who y'all thought was going to be John Cena? Think again, y'all. I didn't expect John Cena at this point. I knew Seth Rollins was in the wrong room. That's why I said that, like, but what made it so bad was, this is one of the bad parts of the rumble itself, man. They had Seth Rollins bring out his boys, AOP and Buddy Murphy. And they all pretty much tried to help him win the Royal Rumble. They did eliminate uh, Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe, which looks to be setting up another Mania matchup between Dole Four and Seth and Buddy and AOP against uh, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and whoever. Probably, possibly Alistair Black with it. I don't know. We'll see. But if they do that match, I won't be invested. We've seen that match on Raw mix up so many times, so I won't be invested at all. So that was all, all the guys in the Roman match. And then it got down to these four men. We get, uh, who was it? Randy Orton, Edge, Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns. That was the final four. And at this point, I'm saying, Edge or Drew, please. Now, I'm explaining with Roman in case in a second. I know a lot of y'all saying no Roman, but here's, here's my thoughts on Roman Reigns. I'm saying it right now for y'all. It's not that I don't mind Roman versus The Fiend. I'm honestly okay with that. I'm honestly okay with that. My issue is how we get there. How we get there. Here we see Roman Reigns in World Rumble. Four guys left. Let's talk about it. We get out of nowhere. Ready all KO moment. Love that shit, man. I love it. I, I, I love Team Ready all KO. They were fantastic together. Edge and Randy Orton. They were a great tag team. But we getting Edge eliminate Randy Orton, kind of something that Randy Orton would do to him. You know what I'm saying? So that was like a little cool little moment right there, man. So let me get the last three: Edge, Drew, and Roman. So then out of nowhere, uh, Roman Reigns eliminate Edge. You know, crowds are the boom at that point. And then we get down to the final two. 
Drew McIntyre and Roman Reigns. What's going to happen? Who won? Who won, folks? Who you think? Who you think won? Drew McIntyre won. Let's go. Yes, y'all. I tried to draw it a little bit, even though I couldn't. Don't know. Probably more likely going to have Drew McIntyre. But anyway. Yes, man. Drew McIntyre eliminated Roman Reigns. Eliminated Roman Reigns. Now, I'm, now let's talk about Roman Reigns first. Then we're going to talk about Drew. As far as Roman go, like I said, I don't mind him facing the Fiend. It's how we get there. And I don't want to have Roman Reigns have to win the Royal Rumble in order to face the Fiend. I forgot they can have another way to do it. I'm glad this was the case. Now, if Roman still face the Fiend, fine. Fine. I'm cool with it. I'm, 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 I'm honestly okay with it. As long as it makes sense. As long as they make the outcome believable. Because it's going to happen anyway. It's going to happen anyway. Okay? That's how I feel about it, yo. That's how I feel about it. Like I said, I don't mind Roman facing the Fiend. Is that if you want to rumble to do it, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it. But, they did the best case scenario. Not only did he eliminate Brock Lesnar, the guy who eliminated 14 other guys, but they also had Drew McIntyre win the whole damn thing and then some. This is how you build a new star. At a point where we both desperately need new stars, man. We do. And we all said Drew McIntyre got everything you need in a superstar. He got the look, he got the size, got the ability, everything. Everything you want in a superstar, Drew McIntyre is it. Same as a guy like Randy Orton. He, got, he just got that if factor, man. That's what Drew McIntyre possessed, that if factor. And we were just waiting for this guy to finally get his moment. And finally, he gets his moment. Right here, in the men's Royal Rumble match. Now, I didn't mention this before. I just thought about it now. I'm sad that Ruby Riot was not in the women's Royal Rumble match. I miss Ruby Riot, y'all. I do. I, if she would show that, I would explode it. But she, sadly, she wasn't in the Royal Rumble. But speed recovers to her, and I can't wait till she come back. But back to Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre won this Rumble, man. Like, after that, after that bullshit with Charlotte, I'm saying they cannot mess this Rumble up, too. They cannot mess this Rumble up, too. And they made this Rumble the one that we all just stood up for. And rejoice and be proud. Maybe not everybody, but most of us are proud to sit here and say, Drew McIntyre is your 2020 Royal Rumble winner. And he is going to be the one to go to WrestleMania and face, more likely in the main event, because he is facing Brock Lesnar. He's the one going to take down Brock Lesnar. As he should be. As he should be. And he's doing it as a baby face. I can't wait to see the intensity might work between Paul Hammond and Drew McIntyre. I can't wait. I'm ready. I'm freaking ready, folks. I hope you're all ready, too. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a freaking blast, y'all. Watch. Watch. Can't wait. I might hate with Charlotte winning, but damn, I'm happy Drew McIntyre won. Couldn't go on to anybody else, man. Well-deserved. We waiting for it and have it. Well-deserved by Drew McIntyre, man. What is it about Drew McIntyre? That's how you do it, man. I had to get WWE that credit. They have to get that credit, man. Overall, as a show, this show overall was average. Honestly. Both Roman has moments, has good moments and bad moments. Overall, as a show, it was just an average show. It it, 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 it did not live up to the Royal Rumble. Okay, it did not live up to the Royal Rumble that we seen years ago. Didn't do that at all. But the outcomes, one was bad, one was good. Simple as that. That's your own review, folks. Damn, we almost all win. Damn, I didn't expect to last that long. You just don't last that long, for y'all. I usually don't last that long. So I apologize in advance. But anyway, thank y'all for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up, man. True, appreciate it. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Turn on the notifications. Share this video, man. Share the video. Help me out. Share the video. Facebook, Instagram, whatever the case may be. Share it. Appreciate it. And also, um, like the video too. Like not, not the video, but like it on uh Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Like it on my Twitter. And also follow me on Twitter at tell my ninety five. Follow me on uh, Instagram at Naruto one sixty one. Both links will be down in the description below. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see each and every single one of you. Possibly for Monday Night Raw review. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because I got work on Monday night. So, 
Might not be able to do it, but I'll let y'all know on Twitter. Appreciate y'all watching. I'll see each and every single one of you in the very next video. Peace.